But yeah, welcome back to Major Slack Attack, your first stop for titillating tactical Elden Ring gameplay, and I have completely commandeered Stormfell Castle. Let me show you. Here's the front, the main gate, okay? Remember I lost $10, uh, 10 runes here, demonstrating what it's like to go through the main gate? I have since recovered that 10 runes, and I have activated this side of grace here. The gate side chamber of Sight of Grace. Got all the pickups here. By the way, got all the pickups. And let's continue up the main road. And as you can see, there is just a wake of carnage. Everyone's dead. The only thing that's left alive is the Lion Guardian boss over there. We'll take care of that in a separate run. But everyone else all along this road completely dead. The entire castle is plundered and pillaged. More carnage in the wake. More carnage. All the way up here, everybody did. We own this bitch! We totally own this place. We have commandeered the place. Everyone here is dead. All those areas are explored. All the pickups we've gotten. I got the troll to come down and bust open this statue. Took care of the omen guy and his little Rottweiler dog. I discovered this side of grace here, the lift side chamber side of grace. Continue up the main road here. Everything is dead. Everything is picked up. Talk to Nephili. Got all the pickups here. The troll is dead and his minions. As you can see, more carnage in the wake here. And everything is clear all the way up to Godric the Grafted. Okay, there's the Godric the Grafted boss fight door. Nephili is awaiting our, our call. And here is the secluded cell side of grace discovered. All that in one go. And I actually have resources left. I have two Flask of Crimson Tears left and I have three Flask of Cerulean Tears left. And I didn't even use my Flask of Wondrous Physic. Yeah, it was a way better run than my Prisoner run where I did the same thing. Yeah, way, way better. And, um, yeah. How'd you do that, Slack? Strategy! Strategy, strategy, strategy. I'm going to show you how to do this right now. You, anybody could do this. You, anybody could do this. Just follow these strategies. I'm going to show you how to do this and completely commandeer Stormville Castle. You could run around and have this. You could just own this bitch. All right? I'm going to show you that right now. Major Slack Attack. Okay, let's get underway here. Uh, first of all, I see that the latest hotfix that came out April 27th, for the most part, fixed the flickering mouse problem. Really happy about that. For the most part. I notice now that when you move, use the keyboard to move the cursor around on the map, the mouse will follow it, which is something that never happened before. Huh. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Seems like a good thing. Anyways, yep, latest hot fix that came out, April 27th. PlayStation is calling it patch 1.07, but I think officially ban uh, Bandi Namco, it's simply a hot fix 1.04.1. Right, that's that. Next, um, this is going to have to be done in segments because this is going to be like a super marathon run. It'll probably take like an hour and a half, maybe two hours to do the whole thing. Um, on the PlayStation, you can easily back up your save files. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows how to do that. Just go to Settings, Applications, Save Data, and you can upload it to online storage. And then you can just restore your backed up saves anytime you like. So if you're following this walkthrough and you want to pick up the walkthrough exactly where we left off at any time, especially after the end of this first marathon run through Stormville Castle, 
you can do that. Just back up your saves and then, you know, download the saves again to put the game right back to where you left off. On the PC version, here is the location of your saved files, like your Elden Ring save files. I'm going to put it up on the screen here. I'm going to give you two addresses. Uh, the first one, just replace your username which with whatever your actual Windows username is. And for the second one, you could just plug it in straight. That um, percentage username, percentage, slash, and then the address. Just type that in directly, and that will work for any Windows um, installation that will take you to your your Elden Ring save files. All right, and then you could just copy and paste those into another folder, back them up, and then copy the uh, copy and paste them back in when you want to pick up the game exactly where you left off from that save file. Um, right? Do you get the idea? <laughs> okay. And some people are asking, how do you practice? That's how I practice. Although. That's kind of tedious. The way I really practice for boss fights is I purposely die near the end of the boss fight. That, that's a lot faster than exiting the game and replacing save files. I find that a lot faster. But, you know, if I accidentally kill the boss, then that's what I have to do. I have to exit the game and then replace it back to the save file. Okay, so that's that. Next, a um, couple of things we want to do before we get into this. Um, there is an extra gold. Everybody should have a golden seed at their disposal now. Inventory right here. Everybody should have one. Oh, I have a sacred tier. Let's just use this right away. We can get another golden seed easily, and then we can get an extra flask charge, which will be really useful. Increase amount replenished by flask. Use sacred tier. Yes, thank you. All right, I want everybody to go to Lyurnia of the Lakes Academy Gate Town. Wow, that's so great that they fixed the flickering mouse. I don't know if they did, uh, did that on purpose, but whatever they did with the hotfix, it fixed the flickering mouse. Fantastic. I love when patches actually do something that, you know, helps you instead of doing all this obscure stuff that you don't care about. Um, let's wait till daytime. All right, everybody bring up your map. From Academy Gate Town, you're going west by northwest, and you're looking for these two green spots right here. You're gonna put a beacon right in between them. Right about, boom, there, all right? And we're going there. And I have another beacon somewhere down here. Oh, there it is. Okay, I was looking all over for that. Okay, my bad. Um, yeah, let's go straight to the beacon. Just ignore everything. Thank you everybody for all your birthday wishes. Thank you so much. And there we go, we got a gold to see. Can we bring up the map? Never have to get away from Next, uh, let's go to Warmaster Shack. So now we have two golden seeds, and you may not need to do this, I just want to do a quick uh, smoldering butterfly run. In the meantime, flask, add extra charge to flask, use two golden seeds, increase number of flask uses. And for this marathon run, I would strongly recommend you set up your flask to, if you're feel, feeling really nervous about having enough health, put it to five and three, but you're going to run FP is going to be a little tight. I would recommend 6 and 2. You're going to do just fine with that, with the strategies I've got cooked up. Pretty much, hopefully, I'm going to hope to do a no damage run. So even like having two flasks for HP is kind of like, you know, but what the hell. 
better safe than sorry. All right, so we're going up to just quick run, one run up to the smoldering butterfly location. Just so we have enough uh, fire pots. So for more Master Shack, run northeast. Then north to the cliffs. Double jump up here. And straight northeast or north. Find all these smoldering butterflies. Grab them all. That's it. Back to the castle. Rampart Tower is where we left off. You're going to need about 100 Firebone Arrows. Yeah, I'd say about 100 Firebone Arrows. About 30 Poison Bone Arrows about the same in blood bone arrows and I'd say about the same in regular fleshed arrows alright so that's 100 fire bone 30 30 and 30 should get you through no problem that's that um, wondrous physic let's set it up for some emergency health Okay, so take out the dexterity knot, we don't need that, and let's put crimson crystal tier just for some emergency health. And this one doesn't matter since you're just using this for an emergency situation. And spells doesn't matter, we're not really a mage, and the ashes of war, oh yeah. Find your hook claws and apply the life steel fist, this is another emergency health contingency plan. Okay. This will allow your hook claws to recover health when you use the skill. That's that. As far as loadout, the default loadout is going to be your Bloodhound's Fang and the Longbow. As far as arrows, my def the default arrows is going to be the Firebone arrows. And you could use the second slot. I don't use the second slot. I find it too awkward because it's hooked up to the strong attack button. I don't know if I talked about this before, so I know that this is an option, but I know I don't use it. I just keep swapping out uh, the first slot with whatever arrows I want to use. Okay, so start out with Firebone Arrows. And Talismans, you want Arrows Reach Talisman, and for this, you want Carrion Filigree Crest to drop the cost of Mighty Shot. This we don't need. Okay, so just the Flask of Wondrous Physic and your HP and FP Flask 2 and 6. That's it, we're ready to go. Alright, speak now or forever hold your peace. We're going on a marathon run. Leaving by the north door. And let me just get rid of that beacon there. We're going to do everything to save FP. We have three Stormhawks here. One, two, and three. You could take them all down instantly with a Mighty Shot, but that's going to use up FP. So just instead, take a Firebone Arrow and shoot the barrel that they're sitting on. Use Precision Aim. Instant kill. This one up here, don't go across that line there. Okay? Otherwise you'll trigger them. And probably want to aim a little low on the barrel. Instant kill. This one's always also sitting on a barrel, but it's kind of a tight shot. I tried this on the PS4. Often I miss, and then the Stormbird take or the Stormhawk takes flight, and then you have to deal with them in flight. So your choice. You could try to hit the barrel, but um, I would suggest wasting a mighty shot, wasting some FP or using some FP rather, and mighty shot, instant kill, done and done. Next. We're going to do the Crucible Knight fight later. We can easily access that from the Rampart Tower side of Grace. We can do that later, so we're going to have to do it now. Continue down this way. 
Once again, this is going to be a 100% run, getting all pickups in all hidden locations. In here is another Storm Stormhawk. He's hidden there waiting to ambush us. Just blow up the barrels with a firebone arrow. And down he goes. Get yourself a smithing stone. And Bob's your uncle. Switch over to your Bloodhound's Fang. And down these stairs. Up on top of the roof. And grab this golden rune. Over here, you can drop down here very carefully. Go around the corner and get five kukri. And now we can drop into the chapel and talk to Rogier. Rogier, my man, what up? Ah, nice to meet you. The pleasure's mine. Roger is the name. A sorcerer, as uh, you might have guessed. I'm looking for a little something here in the castle. When I'm not hot-footing it from the troops, that is. But enough about me. What are you doing here in Stormvale Castle? This place is bristling with tarnished hunters, you know. They sacrifice our kind for grafting. Not exactly a place I'd stroll into without a purpose in mind. I'm here to defeat Godric. I see. Here to challenge Godric and lay your hands upon a great rune, are you? You we can see indeed. it then. I take it. The guidance of grace. Well, enjoy it while you can. I'm tarnished, like you. But unlike you, I've seen neither hide nor hair of this guidance for the longest time. Still, I won't forget how it felt when I first came here, to the lands between. I'm privy to a few magical battle arts. Would you care to learn one? As a fellow tarnished, once guided by grace, I'd love to help you out, if it please. All right, and he's got some ashes of war for sale. Um, Ralph's going to meet him later on at the round table, so we don't even need to deal with this now. So let's just finish this dialogue. Oh, keen to learn another. Nope, dialogue's complete. That's it. We're on our way. Out here, these two guys here never wake up, no matter what. So if you can just sneak up on them and whack them, you know the deal, guys. When you snooze, you lose. See, the other one never wakes up. This is unlike other guys who are grouped together. And out here, we have to deal with a knight, a banished knight, and um, one of those exile warriors carrying a torch pole. What we're going to do is we're going to mighty shot the exile warrior, the guy in the, the crimson hood there. And then we'll do the same routine on the banished knight. Backstab, bloodhounds, finesse, follow up with a strong attack. Wait till they turn around and start patrolling back. Dear cheese. Stop it, Mr. Fumblefingers. Back that. Whoa. That is something that has never happened. The follow up strong attack just missed them altogether. Never seen that happen. Huh. Okay, thanks a lot, game. <laughs> you owe me a little, a little bit of health. Okay, so I had to go uh, just uh, ape shit butt mashing on him. And I'm still alive. This guy just take down with a couple of firebone arrows. You don't have to use mighty shot. This is a good idea to do this. Down we go. And back to the Bloodhound's Finesse. And let me turn on the lantern here. And grab that golden rune. If you peek around the corner here, there's a guy right here. You can just run up and ambush him. Quick strong attack should take care of him. 
Now, the boss that you meet at the very beginning of the game, the one that you're not expected to uh, fight or to expect to beat even though you can beat him. This is him again, except this fight's for real. The Grafted Scion. Don't try to use ranged attacks from up here. Most of them are just going to bump into the fence. You won't be able to get it down there. I have occasionally gotten a glintstone pebble past this fence, but it's not worth it. It's just a pain in the ass. Don't bother. I'm going to show you an easier way to take him down. Out here, get your sneak on. Go off to the left side here. We have business on the left and on the right, but priority number one is this banished knight in here. Same deal. <laughs> Backstab. Bloodhound's finesse. Follow, follow up with a quick strong attack. Bloodhound's finesse is going to miss. The strong attack always hits. 99.99% of the time. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to work. Alright, as soon as you do that, back out and wait here because you may have um, attracted the attention of some of the uh, exile warriors down there. So you're looking at that door over there. If nobody comes through the door, you're good. Very good. And in here, we're going to get the Mimic's Veil. This is a riot. I mean, they fooled around with this a lot. Working it into some strategies here. Grab this, the Mimic's Veil. You can use a little bit of FP to mimic anything in the current environment. So let's just hit that up right away. Let's put this, say, uh, right here. Oh yeah, I'll give you a quick demonstration of how it works. It decides what's like the most what thing to mimic in the current environment. And then as long as you move very slowly and a little bit at a time, any enemies in the area, they may get a little suspicious, but they won't come at you. So you can actually work this into your strategy sometimes. Sneak up on enemies and then launch a surprise attack. Alright. Hopefully I'll show you that later. For now, we could continue there. Okay, right around the corner there, there's a guy patrolling there. The door behind him is locked. We can unlock it by doing what I'm about to do now. But first of all, let's take care of these uh, these two doggies here. Get as close as you can to the edge. And Mighty Shot should finish that slot. This guy, instantly. Huh. I never knew you could get that guy. Probably can't get him because the fence is in the way. Anyways, um... This guy's going to take two because he's like the alpha dog. And down he goes. That there is Chrysalid's Memento if you have not spoken to Rodrika in the round table hold yet, which we have. So now it's the Crimson Hood and it's a couple other unique pickups down there. Don't go down there yet. Instead, go up this pile of bags here. And if you're like me, you got dinked up a little bit for whatever reason, switch over to your Assassin's Crimson Dagger because this will give us, as you can see, critical hits restore HP and we need to restore our HP. We can get a critical hit on this guy easy. Get up right behind him. Watch my HP. And we got our HP back. Very good. Let me just switch back over to... Carry and filigree crest, and we're good to go. Back to the bow. Get yourself a gold pickled fowl foot, and up here we go. Around the corner, and find this rope ladder here. This is the way to continue. But first, Go up across the roof here. This is very important. This will make things a lot easier later on. And very carefully jump up on this thing here. Go down to about the second one here. 
and we're gonna take out these two knights here one and two because otherwise we're gonna have to deal with them in close combat and yeah it's just a lot easier to just take them out now using headshots all right so use precision aim zoom in aim right for the head and I'm using the wrong arrows switch over to your fletched regular arrows that you buy from merchants even this one there we go nice and wait for these guys to stop moving in the meantime you can go after these two guys here probably go after this one first nice same thing with this guy down he goes these guys should have stopped moving by now one thing you could do to get him to stop moving is just shoot an arrow like right near or right beside him that'll get him to turn around and then he stops then go for a headshot keep working on both of them <laughs> nice alright what's going on over here while well, these guys are figuring out what's going on this guy always takes cover behind that that's typical and down it goes timber that's one down doesn't take him up doesn't take long just a few shots and it's well worth it don't try to do moving shots because they typically miss you can get him to stop moving by like I said just shoot an arrow beside him Where's that? And no, not quite. I'm gonna try to do a moving shot here. See, just uh, see, this is what always happens. And timber. That's it. Once you got those two guys down, everything's good. Switch back over to your Bloodhound's Fang, and over here. This guy, uh, we just jump in and do a strong attack. Alright, and now we are right up behind this guy here. Who is alerted to our presence. That's okay. Okay, this is new. I think it just wait till he comes close and then just surprise attack him. There we go. Normally though, he'd be just standing there with his back turned to you could just sneak up right behind him and do like a surprise attack. Alright. Now, depending on the situation, this guy might be. See him, room, the guy is sitting right in front of the fire there. And you can see in the distance the graph is sign. What you, whatever you do, don't go down to the bottom floor. Okay, let's see if we can take out these guys here. Typically target the little the the middle one and use a fire pot. 
and you often get all three. Then that we could take on the Grafted Scion here, but be advised that he could actually come up. Even though he doesn't come up on this platform, he can go underneath the platform and he can hit you from underneath the platform, so I wouldn't advise that. Instead, since we went all the trouble to go up here and open the door, and then we now have an ac access to another high ground location right above him. But before, before we do that, let's peek around the corner here. We can surprise attack this guy. One quick strong attack should take care of him. And we have here Pickled Turtleneck, and this should be a Stone Sword Key, which we're going to use shortly. Right? Now, you have to make a judgment call on what this guy is doing. You could pelt him with a few fire pots, which would be the easiest way to take care of him, but he may, he may not cooperate. He may be like sticker, like right directly below you. And it looks like he's not going to cooperate. Okay, so if this happens to you, go down to this end, draw him away. And on the north, on the west side there, through that doorway there, is the elevator. One of the elevators that wasn't working. Which I should have pointed out. Wait till you draw him down to this end so that you have time to get to the elevator. Great, so he's coming down this end, and we're just going to run for it. Run to the west. You're going to get a little stagger when you hit the ground, and keep going straight down here, all the way into the elevator. Take the elevator up, and this will make it functional. Okay, the elevator is now fully functional, and this is exactly where we started, the Rampart Tower side of Grace. Do not rest at the side of grace because you can respawn everybody. Okay, but the elevator is now fully functional. That's important. Alright, so let's take it back down. Best way to take out the grab to sun, make sure you stay well back from the doorway because he can actually just, like slash through the door, like the the walls around the doorway. Which is complete bullshit, but that's just the way it is. And um, use blood bone arrows. I've tried poison arrows, they don't work. He seems completely immune to poison. Blood bone arrows work really well. Don't bother using mighty shot because it's just going to waste that P. He's going to dodge a lot of your shots. So just keep pelting him. And you're eventually going to cause some hemorrhage. And if you want him to get close, just go close to the doorway and sucker him in. Even if he blocks the shots, keep shooting and you're eventually going to get him to hemorrhage. You know when you, you hemorrhage him when you get like big numbers. There you go, see we got him hemorrhaged. 478. Got some bleed damage there. There's another bleed damage, and that killed him. Done and done. Let me just take a look at my FP count. Six. Okay, it's time for a refill. Okay, so with him down, it's safe to go out here. Let's get all the goodies. Staunching bolus This should be a Highland axe. And there may be something down here. Yep, there is. Exalted Flesh. And we already got everything up there, so this area is completely clear. Next. I'm going to put on our alternate loadout. The Uchi Katana. And the shield. And you're going to swap out the Arrow's Reach Talisman with the Curved Sword Talisman, which enhances guard counters. That's important. Right? And get ready to do guard counters. 
All right, two ways to go. We can go to the southeast here. Here's where all the doggies were. It should be a crimson hood. If you did not speak to Rodrika before uh, this, then this will be a chrysalid's memento, and you take it back to her as Stormail Shack to continue her quest line. Okay, we got all the goodies in here. Over to the other side. In there is the armory. A couple of dangerous characters in there. Make sure you grab this smithing stone here, somber smithing stone. And we can use the stone sword key that we just picked up on this imp statue to get into the armory. Okay, these guys are a pain in the arse. Two guys in there. Exile warriors. Both with heavy duty axes. Um, you only want one of them coming at you at a time. So I would recommend just peeking in just enough to get one of them activated. There seems to be a trigger line here. So they're sleeping now, but you, it's impossible to take them by surprise, even if you use the Mimic's Veil. As soon as you go across this line, they wake up. Okay, it's got them woken up. Here he keeps coming. Run all the way to the other side to give yourself lots of room. Target, guard counter. Easiest way to take him down. Same thing with the other guy. You could pelt him with some some bone darts. Make sure you got enough. <laughs> or throwing daggers. That's another way to take care of him if you're, if you're nervous about doing guard counters. Um, let's load up some of these kukri. All right, and that's this area clear. Get the hot press wood shield and the iron web blade that's very important to put different affinities on our weapons when we apply Ashes of War and the Misery Cord Dagger. This guy we already took care of. There's some rats squealing upstairs. If you go out in the balcony, they'll drop down. There's really nothing... Like, there's no percentage in killing these rats unless you're trying to farm rune arcs. I don't want to play ball. You could actually um, use your gravity skill. Sometimes that brings him down. But I'm not going to waste too much FP on that. I gave him one shot. Doesn't want to play ball. Okay, forget it. This area is clear. Back out into the grafted scion room, find the painting, and then we're going to turn to the left here. I'm a little short on FP. I could use... This is a risk because he's around the corner, but it might be worth it. The hook claws do a surprise attack on him right around the corner and recover a little bit of FP. When you hook up the hook claws... <laughs> If you um, do what you normally do to two-hand a weapon, he'll put the hook claws in both hands like this. And this skill is the lifesteal life steal fist skill. And it recovers HP. Let's see if I can get away with this. Get around the corner here, target him. Great. Excellent. All right, so that's the lifesteal fist in effect.
back to our default loadout, which would be the longbow and the bloodhound's fang. Hook up the longbow for now. And regular arrows. And we got some more regular arrows here. Hey, right, so. Oh, one thing I should have told you start at nighttime so that when you get to the courtyard, it's daytime. Oops. Okay, that's okay. We'll just have to deal with it. All these guys here. We can easily take them out with headshots. Um, let me make sure I got the right gear on. Yeah, let's make sure we have the arrows reach talisman on. Yeah, we could easily take them out with headshots with precision arrows, like precision aim and regular arrows. Just aim straight for their head. Don't go out. Like, for example, that guy right there. Aim straight for the head. Instant kill. Instant kill. Wait for those guys to pass by because sometimes you accidentally hit them. And these guys will eventually take the places of those that got killed. So be prepared for that. Instant kill. See that? He went and took his place. Or he's trying to take his place. So, as they say in the candy business, so long, sucker. And see that guy got activated there? Watch out for that. He's going to come at you with a crossbow. Typically, he, he comes in. Now, we're trying to be careful with our health, so... Here he comes. Could do a couple sneak attacks here. In between his crossbow shots. Make sure you dodge those. Got him. Alright. Same dealio. Nice. Okay. These guys got replaced by others wandering around. Nice. There's the omen and he's got a little scarlet rot dog with him, which I call a Rottwalder. <laughs> um, don't take him on in the courtyard here. I've got a much better plan to take him on on top of this. We're going to on top of this roof here. And uh, we're going to be invincible there. Much easier way to take him down. Okay, so once all these flamethrowers are clear, make sure they're all nice and clear. You can venture out. Continue picking off guys with headshots. That guy may have come down from the balcony up there, possibly. Alright, the thing you gotta watch out for is two guys over here sleeping. These guys manning the flamethrowers, it's impossible to get a critical hit on them if you sneak up behind them. The game just won't give it to you. It's just a pain in the arse. So. Just waste a few arrows, or spend a few arrows here. Headshot, insta kill. All right, and the courtyard is now clear. Oh, there's that guy up there. Let's take care of him. Gotta love those sniper arrows. Okay, and a lot of unique pickups out here in the courtyard. Get a few of them, but uh, I'm going to wait until the courtyard is completely clear later on. We have a, like the run of the place, then we can pick them up. Make sure we got everything. Is 
Okay, so cleaned up most of them, but not everything. We're gonna have the run of the place later on, so wait for that. Whoop, watch it now. And take out these guys. Very good. It's probably a guy sleeping up here. Yeah, we can take him up with a surprise attack. This is a not bad location to take on these guys here. But the omen guy will come up on the balcony, so it's not ideal. It's not ideal at all. He will come up here. And a much better idea. Alright, so down here you're going to find a hidden stairway right here to the southeast. And there's four rats in here. I would recommend longbow and firebone arrows and mighty shot. Should be an instant kill. Sometimes some debris will get in the way like that. There you go. This is the safest way to take it on these guys. You could try to save FP by pelting them without doing Mighty Shot, but that means you have to deal with them as they're coming up the stairs and it can get a little hairy. And we're trying to do everything to save HP as well. Oh, that guy didn't quit. I can finish off. There we go. Okay, count your kills. There's four rats in here. Once you got four rats down. Swat away the buzzing flies and pick yourself up. A fireproof dried liver and use another stone sword key on this. If you fall into this walkthrough, you should have plenty. And in here is the God Slayer's room, what I call the God Slayer's room. Two pickups, the God Slayer's seal, which is way above our pay, pay grade, requires 27... Pardon me, 27 faith. Okay, even with the Faith not crystal tier, that'd be a way above our pay grade. And the Godskin, the Godskin prayer book, which we can give to um, the guy at the round table and then give you more spells to buy from him, which once again is not applicable to this build. Okay, at this point, get your bow back on, get your sneak on, come out here. And all those guys guarding the main gate, make sure you get that golden rune. And there's a there's my money. There's my ten bucks. <laughs> all the guys guarding the main gate with ballistas are right there. We now have them by the nuts. Completely. Now whatever you do, don't go don't drop down here because that's the point of no return. There's no way to get back up. So you want to stay up here and take them all out. I would recommend regular arrows. Make sure you got your arrows reach talisman on and just do headshots. And I always start with this guy here because he seems to see, he, start, he starts bopping around if you shoot one of the other guys and it's going to be a pain. So start with him. Headshot, precision aim, and And I took a hit. That's typical, because once they get activated, they start with a crossbow. You could also use uh, fire pots. There's a guy right there. And 
the edge is blocking the shot. Is the kill. Okay, he's down, he's down. If you look carefully, there's a guy here. And another guy there. That's typical. What what happened? I took a hit? Where is he? There he is, right there. Got him. Yeah, those guys over there might be worth it to wit to use a mighty shot, use some FP to instantly take him out. Normally I don't because it's not really necessary. We're gonna have another vantage point over there just to finish up everybody. Alright, so once this area is all cleaned up, you can go around here, get this guy. I got here. Nice. <laughs> and we got another one here. He's throwing he's trying to throw fire pots at us. Nice try. Okay, so that's the most we can do here. At this point, you want to find this ha this ladder here, conveniently enough. Should be a big up here. Some more arrows. Around the corner. And this is the area where those two knights were. Remember that we, t we took them out from the rooftop up there? This is where they were. And now they're done. So we don't have to deal with them. The only thing we have to deal with is two XL soldiers hidden around the corner there. Um, but first... Okay, we got all the pickups here. First, let's take care of this guy here that I forgot in my prisoner run through Stormville Castle. Hidden right there. Headshot should do him in nicely. That's enough out of you. And we got some guys here. One, two, three, but the priority is over here. Oh, we took him out that guy right there. Nice. Okay, so once he's down, we can start working on these guys. Probably these guys first because they could possibly reach you with fire pot. Okay, so precision shot. Headshot. Follow-up kill and wiping him out of here boss okay now it's gonna be a little risky this is strategy I was working on um, might be able to get get away with using the mimics veil on these two guys around the corner and then do a surprise attack. <laughs> okay, now remember, once you're like in this mode here, 
any button you press with the exception of lock on will take you out of mimic mimic mode so be careful all right you can do a lock on but anything else will take you out of mimic mode so there's two guys around the corner here they got activated typically if you don't move very quickly they won't attack you see the idea is to just creep out here like this just enough that we can get a clear line of fire on this guy here and then we could do a bloodhound's finesse on him which would be an instant kill lock on my bad lock on actually brings you out of it sometimes I've seen situations where lock on does not bring you out of it I don't know what the criteria is okay so one's down um, I think the best thing is just a simple guard counter. It would be the safest thing to do. Uchi Katana. And Beast Crest Heat Your Shield. There's only one of them. Oh, yeah. And Curse Sword Talisman. And quickly follow up, and that's that. Very good. I thought that was a pickup. Alright, so back to our regular loadout. And let's clean up. everybody in this area here so we have a clear run up this road here especially this guy here okay just did an extra shot because I wasn't sure if I killed him that guy's down we're all dead Oh, I see somebody directly below me. You there. Actually, he's a good candidate for a fire pot. And again. Very good. Alright. And it's becoming morning. I think we got them all. Especially that guy. Okay, so once we get down below, <clears throat> or if we start up here, should be a clear run down this road without any ballista trouble. And I believe this is no way. There's one more thing to take care of. Just want to see. I think it's a couple of exile warriors here. Yep, right. Hmm. I wonder if he's going to be. Hey, there's a guy patrolling over there. get a backstab on him. Let's give it a shot. See if I can recover some health. Put on the Assassin's Crimson Dagger. Excellent. Oh, there was a guy over there. My bad, overlooked him, so I get whatever health I got back, I got taken away again. Typically he doesn't come across this bridge. I 
Here he is, right there. This is probably a job for hook claws. gone back to his regular routine. My bad. Yeah, he's up on the platform there. No, he's right there. That's his default spot. Huh. Can't get a critical hit on him. It's gonna even be hard to. So I think he's gonna go for a guard counter. close because he's going to be using his crossbow. I wonder how close we can get to him before he gets alerted. Fairly close. Huh. Well, well, well. Maybe this is a job for the hook claws. <laughs> Excellent. Great, got my health back. Trade you for a little bit of FP. And we're good to go. Ah, how did you get me? Okay, and this should be a cookbook. This is pretty much the end of the line for this run. Um, because right here is a knight and there's an exile warrior right beside him it's hard to get uh, a backstab on him without alerting the exile warrior and or take out the exile warrior without alerting him and there's an easier way to take care of him you could do um i tried this before you could do a longbow shot headshot that was really funny i was going to see if that works again but first before you do anything else, in case we get chased off here, back to your um, default loadout. And poison bone arrows. And we're going to take care of the omen guy right there. But you got to make this jump across here. Uh, yep. Okay, once you made that jump here, this guy down here should be taken out. And now we have this guy by the nuts. I want to take out this Rottwilder first. Um, so. I think maybe. Uh, no. Don't have to use FP. Just. Precision shot. Oops. That's the wrong one. Yeah. Me. 
dainty mutt. Got him. Great. Okay. So. Lock on. Poison bow and arrows. Don't bother using mighty shot. <coughs> Pardon me. You just want to poison him. So just keep pelting him. He may dodge some shots. And you know when he's poisoned when he's like, kind of like, you see this kind of like mist around him. And he's constantly taking damage. Just keep pelting him. That should do it. Watch it now. See, see the damage numbers? See they're changing? 314, 322. Now he's poisoned. So now you can just wait it out. Because as you know, when you get poisoned, you constantly lose health. So you don't have to waste any more arrows. Just, you know. <laughs> Smoking when you got him. Could take him a minute or two. This typically isn't enough to kill him, but it will bring him down to within an inch of his life. So he can save a lot of arrows. And he can't get up here. Impossible. And this is typical. He always goes underneath, but then he'll go back out. <clears throat> I don't feel so good. I think I'm going to throw up. I think I better go sit down. Okay, just wait it out. You can see his health slowly creeping down there. Typically, this is enough to kill him. See, he ran out. So at this point, we probably won't be able to get enough arrow shots in to poison him again, so I would recommend switching over to uh, regular fire arrows, fire bone arrows. And just do a regular, couple of regular shots, don't waste FP on him. There you go, that's it. Easiest way to take down that guy. Alright, now. I want to see if this strategy works again. Uh, it's a goofy strategy I invented with this knight. This is like, this only worked once, so it's like I haven't proved it yet. Um, As long as he can get in the line of fire on his head, if you do a headshot, it's going to harass him. He's going to chase you. Then we're going to go down the ladder and then go across the bridge there. And typically, he doesn't come across the bridge. Or maybe even go down the second ladder. And then once he stops chasing, for some reason, he has problems coming up this ladder. And he gets stuck in this corner here, facing the corner. And then you can sweet, sneak up and do a backstab on him. Really goofy way of taking down this guy. Let's give it a shot and see if it works. Got him. <laughs> Here he comes. Okay. Okay, get a move on because he tends to move fairly quickly. You can even target him as he comes down the ladder. And I wonder what the hell is he toying with me now? <laughs> Do you want to toy with me, eh? So you can play that game. Oh, he went back. Oh, well, ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's try it again. <laughs> nice. 
Nice. Okay, got a new strategy for this guy. Here he comes. Okay, I think he's like fully, he's got a full mat on now. That doesn't work, okay. Run, run, run. Can't target him as he's going down because he's, he's moving, he's a moving target. And where does he give up? There he is right there. That's exactly what he did before. Right. Yeah, he gets stuck in the corner. <laughs> Where's the ladder? They didn't te teach me this in school. Oh shit! I didn't get a critical hit, but at, at the very least, he's down. Great! Okay, excellent! That just leaves the other guy. Um, which we can easily take out with a guard counter. Uchi Katana and the shield. And I gotta keep track of my talismans, that's right. I should have had the arrows reach the talisman on. Um, this we don't need anymore, let's put this guy back on. Alright. Here he is right there. Might be able to get a backstab on him. And I'm at full health, so we don't need to recover any health. Beautiful. Alright, got a brand new strategy for this area. Alright, and this is the end of the line. Typically, um, another way to come down here is like, you can follow all the catwalks and whatnot up there. And then you drop down here behind these guys. And then it's kind of iffy. You take a pot shot at this guy, and the knight typically gets activated and he comes after you. And then you're cornered, and it's kind of a crapshoot. Sometimes he comes after you, sometimes he returns back to his regular routine, and you're cornered here. And that's like a drop to nowhere, I believe. Okay, so this is the end of the line here. Everything is clear. We've got all the pickups there. So now we can go back down to the courtyard. This guy's dead. Make sure you get the pickup here. The omen guy is dead. This to pick up over here. Mushrooms. And it's daytime, so we can take a good look around. This is another statue that can only be broken open by um, a troll who is up there. You got to sucker him down. Here is the painting room. Hit that up, refers to a location in the Weeping Peninsula. That's all we have to, to, to get in here. Okay, now this daytime, let's just take this opportunity to take a good look around. Corey out here, some more pickups here. That guy's down. What? Well, wait a minute.
Oh, fire arrows. That's a unique, a unique pickup. Okay, we took the rats out. We went to the god skin, the god slayer room. Looks like we got everything. All right, get your sneak on. There's some storm hawks up here. This is a great time to call it. I'm kind of pushing my luck here. Okay, there's a storm hawk there. We don't have to get him activated. It's probably preferable if you come this far to activate this side of grace. Don't sleep there unless you desperately need to do so. Just activate it so that if you screw up, at least you'll respawn here and you won't have wasted all that time. This door is locked. Have to open it from the other side. And this elevator is a working elevator. Let's get this pick up here. And that's it. That's part one of the Marathon Stormville Castle run. I'm gonna leave you off here. Like I said, back up your safe if you're gonna play ahead so that you come back to the safe. Um, as long as you don't hit up any set it like rest at any sites of grace, everything that we've done should be clear. And I'm not gonna risk going down the road just yet. Should be clear. What the hell? Let's risk it. That's where all this is my job. Get all these pickups here. Should be clear. Yeah, except for those guys there. Okay, we don't have to deal with them now. Let's just uh, get the pickups up here. Great, got everybody. <laughs> Didn't do a repeat of my prisoner run. Now you have to make the jump across here. Uh, yep. Should be a Trina's Lily up here. Slack call it, it did slack call it. A couple of them. And you. Bugger, you screwed up my prisoner run. Oh. Oh, an arbalist, okay. Well, far out. Can we get out of here? Uh oh, you can always drop down. Okay, so great. The entire everything's clear except for the area. A few guys here guarding the main gate. All the ballista guys are down, but we have the run of the road all the way up here, all the way through the courtyard and up to the lift side side of Grace, and we've cleared out everything. Who loves you? Did you make it? Did you make it this far? Post a comment. It's a lot easier with the uh, the samurai. Okay, so part two. Like I said, I'm going to call and I'm pushing my luck here. It's like an hour and 20 minutes now. Um, I'm going to leave you guys here. Don't hit the side of grace if you made it this far. We still got plenty of gas in the tank. I've still got four um, flasks of cerulean tears. And I've still got two flasks of crimson crimson tears. I have, in effect, done a perfect run. Um, it didn't. Uh, I took damage, but I was able to recover my health. So yeah, it's going really well. 
Thanks a lot for watching, and if you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up for an extra long, super long Sunday video. And I'll see you next time for part two of our marathon Stormville Castle run. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1, that's all. That's all it takes, alright? Thanks a lot, really appreciate it.